Hey everybody, welcome back. It's the 80s revolution. Tonight we're going to be taking a look at a few recent pickups of mine, uh, a few Blu-rays. We're going to be looking at a few uh, packages I got in the mail. We're going to do some unboxings. And then I'm going to take you around uh, a room tour, a tour of my room, my collection room. Um, we're going to go through some of the shelves. We're going to I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, some of what I have and, and you know, meaning behind it and things like that. So uh, we'll get started first with uh, with some unboxings um, down here. Hang on a second. Got a couple packages in the mail over the week and uh, wanted to show you what I got. Um, I'll show these to you and then they'll make a little bit more sense when I uh, start going through the collection. You'll kind of get a better understanding of why I, I have these things. So first up, these are some eBay packages, some eBay purchases. First item up. Miami Vice, season five. This, uh, this completes the Miami Vice TV show uh, collection. Uh, this is not the, this is obviously not the recent HD uh, box or uh, Blu-ray box set that came out. Um, these are the uh, these are the um, you know regular discs that were released a couple of years ago. This is season five. Like I said, completes the Miami Vice collection. Next up, another eBay purchase: the Rambo cartoon. Um, Short-lived cartoon, 1985-86, obviously starring uh, Rambo, uh, obviously a takeoff of the uh, of the first Blood movie that came out uh, around the same time. Not a super popular cartoon, only lasted a year, somehow made it to disc. Um, they released, uh, I think it's six individual volumes with something like ten episodes on each disc. Uh, this should cover the whole entire series. I've got, um, well, three now. I've got uh, volume one, two, and three. So here's Rambo, Savage Island, volume three. Next up, these are sometimes difficult to get open, these foam packages. Let's see how I do it without scissors or anything like that. All right. Ah, getting closer to completing the Rambo set. Uh, the Rambo cartoon. This is volume four, another ten episodes um, from the Rambo cartoon, uh, circa 85, 86. These are all uh, fairly cheap off of eBay. Uh, Miami Vice was like $22 um, in each Rambo season. Uh, I think one was like five something and another one I paid like eight bucks for. So um, inexpensive and on our way to completing a couple of series here. So um, I am going to, so basically we'll talk a little bit about the collection. Um, I, I've been collecting, um, well, these guys behind me, I've been collecting since I was a kid. Um, I had all of these guys when I was a kid. And then when I got a little bit older, I think around 21 or 22 years old, um, they were in a box. They were kind of the last of my uh, childhood toys. They were in a, in a box, in a closet. And like I said, I was 21 or 22. And I remember um, having no money and my friends were going out uh, drinking for the night. Um, and I wanted some going out money. So I took a whole box of childhood, all of these guys, um, took a whole box of childhood and, and, and brought it to a, uh, like a collectible store. And I think I got $200 for, um, probably about eight or $900 worth of, you know, figures at the time. Um, and you know, went out that night. And so a couple of years later, um, when I, um, you know, got, uh, bought a house and, and, and things like that. I started, um, I started wanting to buy these guys back. 
uh, that I had sold so foolishly. And that really just started a whole unstoppable trend of collecting uh, 80s toys, 80s memorabilia, um, especially things from, especially things that I remembered having as a kid. Um, that's, that sort of comes first. Even if I have no interest in the item, if I can remember it, that I'm buying it. If I, you know, if I run into it at a thrift store or a garage sale, um, and I remember having it, I will buy it. Um, so a lot of my collection is stuff that I've had, and a lot of the collection is just is stuff that I never had, and and just stuff from a particular era that you know is so spe uh, so special to me. Um, so like I said, I, I started rebuying these. Um, and then as you'll see, I started buying them in the package. Um, so I've got a, a loose, a complete loose collection of the, these are, these are uh, WWF, the old World Wrestling Federation, um, LJN Wrestling Superstars figures. Um, I could do, I could talk forever about these. I, this, this is my childhood behind me. Um, you know, I had G.I. Joe's, I had He-Man figures, I had, you know, I, I had friends, um, I had bikes, I had Ataris and Nintendos, but this um, was the only thing I ever played with as a kid, daily. I, I, you know, I would play with these guys daily, from probably age 8 uh, to, I'm embarrassed to say, probably 14. Um, uh, every day, you know, every day um, having matches and creating stories and bad guys and good guys and... I did everything with these guys. I made rankings. I made. I wrote a magazine based on whatever action was happening with the figures. Um, so big, huge part. All, always, you know, holds one of the most special spots in my heart um, and my memories are these guys here. Um, and then, like I said, it just kind of took off. Um, it's expanded. It's expanded to. Uh, uh, to TV shows of that era, to TV shows of the 80s and 90s. I've been collecting those for about a year, and we'll get into that, and you'll see that for a year I've amassed a pretty big collection. Um, that got into Nintendo games. It started with just buying a few, and then I thought, well, maybe I can you know, get as get as close to the complete collection as I can. So I started getting those in, in large quantities, and now I'm up to 400 um, board games, uh, just ran, you know, just random stuff from the 80s. So we'll take a trip around the room. Um, we'll go through each shelf. Um, I'll tell a little bit of story about it. Uh, this might be done in, in two or three parts. Uh, depends on how much I talk about the items, how much they generate uh, memories and, and conversation from me. So um, if there's something that I show you that I pass too quickly and you want more of a look at it, let me know. Um, and I'll do more of an in-depth um review of some of the stuff that I have. So uh, because I got some DVDs in the mail, I'll take you to that part of the room and show you uh, a bit of a uh, my, the start of my DVD, uh, TV shows on DVD and cartoons on DVD collection. So let's go there. Okay. So we'll start here. Um, this is TV shows. Uh, I'm sorry, this is cartoons. Um, Obviously, cartoons of the 80s were, uh, I mean, never, never going to be duplicated. I'm sure that folks in the 70s and, and earlier will say that, you know, their decades cartoons were better than anything. But to me, um, nothing can come close to matching uh, cartoons. Oh, my E.T. thing is uh, spinning. Uh, nothing can come close to matching the cartoons of the 80s. So, um I started buying them. So I've got, uh, we'll go through these. We've got um, He-Man, obviously, is a, you know, a staple. Um, next to that, She-Ra. You might notice a little something different about She-Ra um, that may or may not be a bootleg. I'm not exactly sure, or um, I just won't be telling you. But you can tell from the glossy, uh, fantastic cover job that I did that those, those just might be um, bootlegs. Uh, G.I. Joe fantastic box set. Um, we can go through each one of these. Uh, we can do, you know, unboxings of the DVD sets if you want to take closer looks at them. Um, all four um, boxes of Thundercats, so that's two volumes um, uh, per season, two seasons. 
So we've got a complete Thundercat run next to that is Brave Star. Um, pretty neat uh, space cowboy uh, cartoon. Gem, sure, why not? Um, you'll see some, I don't know, uh, can we say girls' toys anymore in my room? I mean, do we, are, are toys identified by gender anymore these days? Uh, sure, it's the 80s, right? It's the 80s revolution. Uh, you'll, you'll notice some girls' toys around my room. I'm cool with that. I'm good if it was something that I remember or enjoyed or my sisters had it maybe and I find it, I'll buy it. You'll see a couple of things that, um, you know, are more oriented towards females down here. Uh, Transformers, these are all complete sets, so the complete run of the Transformers. Um, box 1 and 2 of Pee-wee's Playhouse, that's a complete run of Pee-wee's Playhouse. Muppet Babies, uh, right here. One of my absolute favorite cartoons, never got an official release. Too much music, um, too many, you know, uh, hurdles with uh, rights and copyright things. And so, uh, unfortunately had to... Uh, go to the evil sources of bootlegging to get my Muppet Babies set. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, The Legend of Zelda, Shirt Tales, Drac Pack, which uh, I've never seen, and I think it's from the 70s uh, or very early 80s, 81 or so, but uh, it was cheap. Uh, it looked okay. It's from Hanna-Barbera. Let me move, get a long gang figure out of the way. Um, you know, Drac Pack. Um, looked cool. It was like four bucks on eBay, so I bought it. The Super Mario Brothers Super Show, pretty awesome. Um, Super Mario 3, the complete series. Super Mario World, the complete series. We got Back to the Future, the animated series. We've got Tales from the Crypt Keeper. Um, pretty neat stuff. I love Tales from the Crypt. Um, I had no idea. Well, I think I remember. I think this was on Fox. I think this was like a Fox Kids show um, back in the day. Maybe even the 90s. Um, I think it had to be. I think Tales from the Crypt was 90s. So, Tales from the Crypt Keeper. Um, oops. A uh, may or may not be bootleg of Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. Okay. Uh, how could any 80s fan, how could any wrestling kid not have Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling? DuckTales. Volume 1, 2, and 3. I think there are, uh, there was never a Volume 4, but I'm pretty sure there's like 20 episodes that never made a disc, so um, this is not complete, but it is it is only what's available uh, legally. Uh, the Garbage Pail Kids, which I never saw, but why not? Pebbles and Bam Bam, the complete series, Hanna-Barbera. Chuck Norris, Karate Commandos, literally five episodes in this entire run. Five episodes... And that's it. So I don't know when this was on. I don't know how, why it would only run for five episodes. But Chuck Norris Karate Commandos complete five whole episodes. Pup named Scooby Doo seasons one, two, three, and four. Uh, the Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo, which is another '80s, um, you know, kind of a, uh, a, a um, piggyback off of the popular Scooby Doo. Um, there is the popular Scooby-Doo in a pretty cool box set, which we can go through if you'd like sometime. Um, comes in the uh, mystery machine. Coming along here, we've got kind of some must-haves. Again, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's a complete run. Might be missing a series because I'm actually watching it right now. So I think season three I'm currently watching. So it's not down here. Uh, Dennis the Menace uh, actually was just released um, by Mill Creek. Uh, a few weeks ago, I picked that up. The Ghostbusters, these are the ones that just came out, and there's some, there's sort of some issues with these. Um, this was the first five volumes that came out uh, maybe six months ago, and then they started releasing six through ten. I have six and seven so far. The problem with these is apparently they're only doing ten volumes, and they're not in order. Um, they skip around. They left off episodes for whatever reason. Um, so when I get the 10th uh, volume, I'm still going to be short about 21 episodes, um, which is unfortunate because the real Ghostbusters, um, the uh, the Firehouse set is, is going on eBay for like $400 and up. So 
I'm going to have to get those missing episodes somehow. Um, Cops, pretty underrated 80s, 90s uh, cartoon. I have that complete run on two discs. There's my Rambos with a couple more to add. Uh, Qbert, fun stuff from a, an old uh, series called Saturday Supercade, which was 85 or so. Uh, the Dukes, the Dukes of Hazard cartoon from Hanna-Barbera. The original Ghostbusters. Yes, not the real Ghostbusters, but the original Ghostbusters from Filmation. Um, bit of a bootleg there. Brady Kids. Uh, Super Friends, a couple of discs, or a couple of uh, seasons of Super Friends. My Pet Monster, complete series. Gummy Bears, complete series. Uh, also, possibly from the depths of illegal means. Not entirely sure. Uh, Star Wars, the Ewoks. Good stuff. The Mr. T and Friends cartoon. We've got Silverhawks. Sorry about the camera. I keep. We got Silverhawks. We've got Pac Man. We've got Mask. A fantastic show. A fantastic toy line. Um, Mask is is fantastic. Uh, and Beetlejuice. Okay. Oh, and next to that, obviously, is the Flintstones hiding behind some Remco uh, Rocky figures from '83. Um, Clubber Lang, Mr. T, and of course the champ with belt, championship belt. This is a Jax Rocky figure that I had and stuck up here. Um, and we've got a little Rocky eraser from um, 85. If you can see that, 85, you can't see that. So that's from 85. So next to that, the complete run of the Flintstones in a neat, uh, kind of like a radio, I don't know, it looks like a like a sort of an old, well, obviously a prehistoric um, radio. So, cartoons on DVD, shelf number one above it. Um, I've decided that... Uh, you know, I can't collect every figure from every line because I will completely run out of room. What I'd like to do is, as I watch a cartoon um, complete, I'd like to get some of the figures to go with the cartoon. So I started watching Turtles uh, last year, and so I started picking up some Turtle figures. These are all original Playmate uh, 1988 figures, and that's Series 2, 1989. Um, so we'll go through, obviously... These are about as these are all pretty complete. Um, Splinter, um, we've got Michelangelo with Numchuck, uh, Leon, um, Raphael um, with Psy weapon. We've got April O'Neil. She's got a, a suitcase and a camera, and inside the suitcase is a pistol, um, which is uh, kind of hard to explain to my four-year-old. Um, thanks, eighties. Uh, Donatello with, uh, stick, or whatever, bow, I think it was called. Leonardo, we've got Shredder in the back, the evil Shredder. We've got Bebop. Uh, my four-year-old has Rocksteady right now. We've got a foot soldier. From Series 2, we've got Casey Jones. Um, we've got Krang, the evil Krang. We've got Baxter Stockman. And we've got Rat King. Um... What do I have that's not down here that my kid has? Uh, Rocksteady, and I think that's it. Um, we share. Uh, a couple of loose packages, which, I don't know. If they come with the figure, I like them. Um, I love hanging on to stuff like this. You can just, this one had a bubble, which is still kind of intact. I love that. Um, little Turtles collector figure case that a lot of action figure lines had. He-Man had, the wrestling figures had, Turtles had, and nobody ever put their figures in those cases. So, But it's pretty cool to look at. I got a Turtles um, uh, lunch pail behind there. Um, back here, um, just some starting lineup figures. Um, loved those as a kid. Um, these I got from a garage sale like a year ago. Um, 
they were just in a big box and the guy just wanted to get rid of them. So I think I paid like, I think I paid like uh, $8 for, I don't know, a hundred starting lineups. Um, I sold them all on eBay uh, and as one big giant lot because I just didn't have the room for them. But I did keep the USA, uh, I think it's a 92 Dream Team. Um, I kept some of those figures. I kept the uh, kind of the NBA background stand. And then I kept all the Yankees um, starting lineups that came in that batch. I think a couple of them had fallen. I think Don Mattingly fell over behind there. Because um, I'm a Yankees fan, and if I'm going to have starting lineup figures, I pretty much only want the Yankees ones, so I kept those. Um, I'm not really actively pursuing them, but if I pick them up, I'll pick them up. All right, um, let's see. Coming over here, um, we've got a bookshelf. Uh, starting lineup talking baseball um, pretty cool picked that up at a goodwill for like two dollars and 99 cents uh, a while back uh, I have a couple of um, Dallas Cowboys starting lineup figures that was my team when I was a kid so we got Emmett Smith and Troy Aikman and Herschel Walker up there um, video game board games I love like little um, uh, like sort of Sort of like niche collections, like so board games. I like um, I like TV show board games. I like game show board games, and I like video game board games. So this is my video game board game shelf. Um, so we've got some Pac-Man games. We've got a Zaxxon game, which is the cool um, Pac-Man and Ms. Pac-Man, basically the same game, um, going around and, and chasing marbles. Um, Qbert. We've got Frogger. Um, so that's a pretty cool little side collection. Of board games um, coming down just stuff uh, we've got Atari 2600 in box um, and you know what I love I love when there's still price stickers on the stuff I love that this was $89 at Kmart um, back in the day so pretty awesome Atari box there is an Atari in there um, that works um, this is obviously a special game I was a kid loved wrestling um, loved anything to do with wrestling, and since Atari was the first video game system that I had, I was blown away when a wrestling game actually came out. But of course, like every other Atari game, um, it was dreadful. But at the time, it was the greatest thing ever, so I have that. Uh, a couple of glasses that I've just picked up randomly, some Care Bears, an E.T. glass. Uh, Spuds McKenzie, remember him? Um, I've actually had this for... <laughs> Since this is this is like mine from when I was a kid. A um, couple of random um, Atari games in the box. Just I don't know. I think I grabbed these for like fifty cents at a flea market. No, no reason. The games, you know, I don't really care about the games. I just you know grab the boxes and put them on a shelf. I'm not going to be really getting any more. They're just there. Um, ooh, there's my Jason Voorhees mask. Uh, coming down here is another sort of shelf of random video game stuff that these Coleco sort of mini arcade games um, Those are those are pretty awesome. This one works and it's actually fun to play It's a good you know, these, these are like eighty nine ninety dollars and up um, And I was at a video no, where was I? I was at a toy show and somebody had it for twenty five dollars and I said wow, that's awesome um, grabbed it quickly. Next to that is kind of a different version, a, a less, um, you know, this is kind of a higher, higher level version than this, but a little bit more handheld version of Pac-Man from Tomy or Tomitronic. Um, it's actually got some Japanese letters next to it. Obviously, you know that uh, Pac-Man, you know, was Puck-Man in, in Japan, so I don't know if, you know, I don't know if that's Japanese, uh, Originally or not, but um, so some Sega Master System games. I do I do have a Sega Master System. This is a very minuscule collection, but um, there it is. And below that is the Sega Master System. A uh, couple more random glasses. Some Flintstone Kids, um, Hamburglar, uh, cool uh, McDonald's Garfield glass, and this gigantic I don't know Pepsi gallon glass, which is great. Um, okay, next up, we're going to talk about these two board games. Yeah, you guys know what that is. Uh, 
any uh, 80s toy fan or 90s toy fan knows what that is. Um, Fireball Island, for some reason, well, first of all, this game's fantastic. Um, but for some reason, it is an extremely expensive game. This game goes for 200 to $300 on eBay. Um, so I, I pretty much wasn't going to ever have it because um, I'm not paying $300 for a board game. Um, but a year ago, maybe two years ago, I went to a... I was driving with my kid. He was probably two at the time. And we were just driving home, and I noticed a garage sale, and I just took a quick glance as I was driving by, and I saw this giant, awesome Fireball Island box sitting there. And I practically slammed on the brakes, um, backed up like a lunatic, you know, burned rubber in front of his house, you know, ran out of the car, and, uh, you know, casually asked, Hey, how much is, how much are the board games? And, uh, he said... You ready for this? A buck. <laughs> so, I bought Fireball Island two years ago at a garage sale for four quarters, and uh, I have not stopped, uh, you know, being excited about that. There's one card missing. I think there's 42 cards in this deck and uh, or in this game. There's I have 41. There's one card missing, and there is one little plastic character missing. Um, one plastic character on eBay is about $25, and the cards are probably 4 bucks. So I can complete it, and I can obviously complete it for a heck of a lot less than it's worth. Um, so a $1 Fireball Island box has, you know, some little bit of wear and tear. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, that's by far my biggest uh, find at a garage sale ever. Okay. Um, we're going to come back with part two. So this once again, and I will say goodbye. Um, this was collection room uh, part one. We're going to go through the rest of the room probably now in about, uh, probably going to do it in about three or four parts. So look for part one. Let me know what you think. We'll see you soon for part two on the 80s revolution. Take care.